now that we have our dragster design, what's important is to go ahead and to create a tool path by which we can actually machine out this car body. By doing a machine path as opposed to a manual build and as to doing using CNC as opposed to manually building your car, you're going to create a car that's number one very symmetrical, very precise, and very accurate when it comes to design when it comes to actually judging this car. And that's important. To be competitive in CO2 drags for racing uh, at the at this district, state, and national levels, one must really consider how well they manufacture, design, and build their car. Precision is extremely, extremely important in CO2 dragster racing. CNC and milling out our cars give us an innate, an incredible, incredible advantage when our cars are actually judged. Also, our cars are more symmetrical. They're going to run better. They're going to, they're going to go down the track better. They're going to perform a lot better. So, how do we get from this point here to where our car is actually going to look like this? When it actually comes to making a CO2 dragster, the image you see here is exactly what we want. Here you see an image of the dragster that we have designed actually being milled out on a CNC router. We have a custom bit that we're actually using here. It's a long uh, eighth inch four flute end mill. And with this milling bit that we have in our CO2 router and the fixture that you see, we're able to actually make a very accurate car. But what we have to do is to get from this point to the tool path. Here you can see a closer detail of the actual tool path as it's being milled out on the car. You can see how the car is actually loaded into the fixture. Notice the dowel rod shaft going into the back of the car. At that place on the back of the car, it's very important that we make an accurate um, offset point. We'll go through all this in detail of how we actually generate this tool path in the, in the upcoming videos that you're watching now. Okay, what I want to do now is to switch from what we are trying to achieve now with this dragster to actually what the tool path is going to look like. I've gone ahead and made a copy of this file and I've gone ahead and created a tool path to show you uh, what the tool path actually is going to look like in SOLIDWORKS with CAMWORKS, our tool software that we're going to use. So let's go ahead and switch over to another screen showing our other dragster. Okay, I went ahead and changed the color of the dragster to blue and I went ahead and I've opened up the CAMWORKS tabs as you can see here. Uh, in this CW tab right here, it's called Feature Tree. This is where we actually go and we create our tool strategies. And then from there, we'll generate what's called an operation. And in the operation, this is where we actually create the actual tool path. And as you can see here, as I run my mouse over this screen, this actually shows on the contour mill the uh, actual holes that are created as we're trying to mill out the, the dragster holes where we put our axles and our bushings. Then, as I come down here, you see this is the roughing pattern. Let me rotate the car around so you can see this a little bit better. The roughing pattern is where we take the actual um, tool and we go ahead and rough out material. Let's go ahead and look at that as it simulates and it's running. The simulator is a very, very powerful tool which allows us to simulate what the actual operation is going to look like. I can change the speeds of my operation. Now, this looks fine. Well, let's go ahead and run this. So as you can see, it's running really, really slow. So I'm going to stop that here for a moment, and I'm going to speed this up here, and I will go ahead and increase the speed to 50. Now I'll go ahead and run the tool path. And here you can see the, the actual bit, the one that we chose and that you actually saw in the actual photographs. That bit goes and roughs out the material that we no longer need so we can get down to where we can make a fine path. I'm going to go ahead and stop that. Here you can see the actual tool pass and the different layers that's on there. Let's go ahead and look at a uh, rear view of the car. As you can see, these are the step down cuts as it's making into the, into the car body block. Here you can see we actually mill past the car so we can get, uh, make sure that we get no mate lines as we're milling this out. You can see this is pretty complex, but don't worry, I'm going to show you how to do it. Here we can see what's known as the fine tool path. What I'm going to do is select both of these and simulate them at the same time.
It's really neat how you can just rotate the view as the part's actually going. And I'll rotate this around again. And you can still see it cutting it out. Now, as you can see, it's done the roughing pattern. It's actually going in and milling away all of the other material that uh, is in the way from the roughing path. This is creating a very, very fine cut. I set the step over to 15% of an eighth inch ball mill. That's a really fine cut. It creates such a quality cut that you do not really have to sand the car once it comes off the CO2 fixture. All you have to do is paint a sand seether or a wood hardener on it to make the car ready to be sanded and painted. Now, as you can tell, it's milled out the car to the profile that we've designed it here in the simulator. We still have to come back here and mill out the wheels on the car, but we have the tooling operations that do it. Now, this is just the left side of the car. We still have the right side of the car over here to mill out as well. And as you can tell, I've got tool pass over here that says right. I rename all my groups of how I actually mill these out. So this is where we want to get to. We want to be able to get to this point and write these files off to our memory or th sticks or thumb drives, take it back to our, CO to our CNC mill and then place a block on the fixture and then mill out our car as you saw in the two previous photographs. So this is complex, but having the skills to be able to do this is very, very, very valuable. This will put you in the top 1% of our country that know how to use uh, advanced manufacturing techniques. From milling out a CO2 dragster, there's really not anything I could not make when it comes to CNC. The CO2 dragster gives us a very advanced capability that puts us where we can mill out not just a little simple wooden car, but any kind of advanced part that we could use for automotive design or we could use for aerospace engineering or even biomedical engineering. So having this tool, having this skill set is extremely valuable to you. So let's go ahead and go back to our SOLIDWORKS file, our previous file, and let's get started on creating our tool pass. I failed to stress a couple of important factors about using CAMWORKS and SOLIDWORKS together. First of all, CAMWORKS, just to give you a background information, was the first software application that SOLIDWORKS ever used that was embedded inside of SOLIDWORKS to create a tool pack. Most software out there, actually in the historical sense, was always an external process. What's important to understand about CAMWORKS is that CAMWORKS is an internal process to SOLIDWORKS. To actually generate your tool path, most companies in the past would have to allow you, would, would require you to create an external post file and then take that post file and to go back to uh, your software and then to write the software out to an external file and then take that external file and then go to another uh, application and write it out and create the toolpath. Well that takes too long. And you're never not really clear or sure if your geometry is going to be correct. So what CAMWORKS does is it allows you to create that toolpath inside of SOLIDWORKS. Your geometry is incredibly precise. It doesn't, allow, it doesn't require you to switch back and forth from one file to another and to try to make sure that your files are translated correctly and to not get anomalies in actual milling it out. Here you see I'm actually running the milling process when I'm making the dragster holes. Well, I'm going to go ahead and stop that. I'm going to flip around to the other side. So in further discussion on that, uh, we're going to go around here to the right side here. I'm going to rotate the car around. You can see this. I'm going to do the right roughing path. Actually, I'll go ahead and get both of them. We'll simulate those. CAMWORKS, one of the things I want to stress is that I'm not trying to be a salesman at CAMWORKS. What I'm trying to ex actually stress is that being able to use this software is an advanced skill set that's going to allow you, as I said earlier, to do a lot of things. So let's give you an example of that. There are companies out there, for example, Roush Motorsports. Roush Motorsports uses CAMWORKS to make their high performance parts that go on their NASCAR automobiles they're racing. They also use it to go on their high performance Mustangs that they create using a Ford Motor Company motor Mustang car. Well there, they're actually able to add super advanced high performance parts all using this. The CAMWORKS is also used by companies like New Balance that makes tennis shoes where you can go out and design a high performance running shoe or athletic shoe. It's also used 
uh, in their mole capabilities where they create their advanced moles. Aircraft companies use uh, camworks to create very complex seven and nine axis parts. But also companies like Stratocaster, excuse me, like Fender Guitar that they use to make the, the awesome Stratocaster guitar that many rock stars use, all use SolidWorks and Camworks to design their parts. For, in fact, I strongly recommend that you get on SolidWorks website and go look at the story about Camworks and how they use it with SolidWorks to create their amazing guitars that they use out there in the industry. So what I'm trying to stress to you is that it's not just a simple little CO2 dragster that we're making. We're, we're making, designing and making a dragster and creating advanced tool paths. From that skill set, we could go to work for companies that use this technology like Roush Motorsports or New Balance or Stratocaster, um, excuse me, Fender, that creates a Stratocaster guitar. The skill sets you're learning on this little project are incredibly valuable.